Okay, I'm waiting. I don't know if you hear it, but it keeps saying, okay, live. You're now live. I am now live, and I'm not wearing a black shirt today. I decided I was going to wear a different shirt. I got a lot of shirts in my closets, but I bought a whole bunch of new black ones, so don't despair. Hope everyone's doing well. Today's the 14th of December, which means we'll have Facebook Live today, the 21st, and then the 28th. So we're down to our last three Facebook Lives of the year. We have have a big following on them. We hope you enjoyed them and hope you continue to enjoy them. Again, uh, if you have ideas or topics you would like me to discuss, uh, please let me know. We're happy to, to listen. Uh, you could see that um, we think everything we do is great or we try to do everything well. Uh, but you'll notice Lily has posted uh, and is posting our top 10 lists of top 10 cases people looked at, top 10 lectures people looked at, top 10 videos people looked at, top 10 quiz questions people liked. So we try to do a lot of different things, but only you, our audience, know specifically what you want and what people want and need changes over time. So we're here to listen specifically to what you have to say to us. So just let us know what you want and we will do it. Okay. Now, in terms uh, of, oh, let me say hi to John Biakino, who's home today. I guess John's almost always home on Thursday. And uh, Sumia Boldo, we'll say hi. Not sure where he is. I know John is in uh, nearby, very close to, uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, not quite Owings Mills, in Timonium, which is just outside of Baltimore. Nice place to be. It's, I don't know where you are, anybody, but it is cold today when I came to work. It was 23 degrees, so we had some snow on the grass or ice on the grass the other day, but it is getting to winter, so that's no great surprise. Last year we had no snow. This year far, was Almanac is calling for lots of snow. Um, anyway, um, let's see what else. So I did put down emergency radiology as the way of uh, topic of the day. You know, one of the interesting things was I was at the uh, symposium last weekend in Florida, and one of the things that was of great interest, and of course many things were of great interest, but one of them is especially emergency radiology. Um, in part because, you know, people are in the position now, let me fix that, people now doing lots of ER work and emergency radiology becomes more and more important. So we had lectures, I was running the GU section with OB emergencies and the GYN emergencies, kidney from infection to inflammation to bleeds, adrenal bleeds and all that. And so there's a lot more and a lot of things you can do from trauma to non-trauma. That whole emergency setting becomes very important for all of us and so one of the things we will try to do this year is have more and more um, lectures, more and more content focusing on emergency radiology. So let us know specifically, I am, uh, we had a meeting this morning, I am gonna work on a few trauma lectures. We haven't done that in a while. We've done upper extremity trauma, we've done lower extremity trauma, but we haven't done thoracic trauma, we haven't done abdominal trauma in a while, so we'll be doing that. Also, a lot of demand for AI stuff, and I've given a bunch of talks over the last month. I think six of them in different places on AI, and we'll come be coming back to you with some of the AI stuff that we are looking at and we are thinking about. So that'll be kind of really good. Um, one of the things also we uh, need to really uh, consider is kind of a focus on what things indeed become very important to everyone. Um, I think we mentioned protocols before in the ER setting, you know, the article published that 30% of findings are missed in the acute abdomen if you don't give IV contrast. So one of the things when we speak about emergency radiology is the importance of protocols. We're re-looking at our protocols, in fact, should we be doing dual phase imaging in the abdomen in a trauma patient? Uh, could you miss subtle splenic injuries, for example? Do you need delayed phase imaging to look at the excretion of contrast? Now again, 
if you were in the ER and you were the radiologist sitting there and you could look at the case and saw the arterial phase and you can make decisions, that would be easier. But of course, none of us for the most part are sitting there, maybe some of the residents, but things happen so quickly, the techs should not be in the position of making up their mind, well, do I need a delay, do I need this? We teach them in certain situations what to do and our techs are terrific but I think the way to do things, of course, is to have protocols where things are more standardized. I think protocols become very important and always have been very important. The best way to get the best study is to have a protocol. Our challenge is not to do too many phases because of radiation dose. How do we maintain getting enough phases without too many? What are the right phases? You know, it's always easy after the study is done and say, well, you should have got this. You should have done this and the same person will then look and say well why did you do this you didn't need this phase you didn't need that phase so again it's hard to uh, create protocols that fit every single person to say if it's bad trauma do an additional phase what's bad trauma patients come in all the time with delta trauma but that may refer to the head and not the body but we don't know that so you know and you have a perfectly negative chest abdomen and pelvis but you only know that after the fact so again we're trying to figure out ways of doing it better and we'll share that with you we also are looking we're adding more cases and i'm going to have more quiz cases this year i'm doing the next year's quiz cases the monthly quiz put a little bit more trauma in there and a little bit more trauma to our teaching files which has a lot already uh, but to kind of work on that as well. So we're doing all of that. Again, very important for us, I mentioned at the beginning of the hour, is your comments, your suggestions. What do we need to, to really be able to find? Um, you know, uh, uh, I think that's very, very important to us. You know, we really need to uh, um, basically be able to uh, you know, select. I mean, there's so many choices we have. It really comes down to what it is it that we should be doing. So I think that's very exciting. Uh, we are, um, you know, looking at many different things. We're looking at our own work in AI. We're looking at other people's work in AI. We're looking at new scanners like photon scanners. We're looking again at optimizing, looking again at protocoling, all the things you need to be doing. Um, I think I'll probably also have maybe John or other people, Becky, uh, who are some of our senior technologists, Becky's our chief CT tech, may be joining me at a couple of these sessions to discuss what they're doing, how they maintain quality. One of the things at the meeting last week was a lot about remote radiology, which is here to stay. That's not a passing fancy. But then the question is, how do you engage people? How do you make sure people are able to maintain quality when they're remote? It's a little trickier. You're not really dealing with people quite the same. And you know you could do it for a while, but if you're doing it for years, how do we make certain that you're happy, that you're engaged, and that you're learning? So I think we'll love to have your suggestions as well. I think that indeed becomes very important for us. But again, what is it we need to be doing? I think that is indeed very exciting. Um, other things that we are looking at, uh, again, quizzes. You know, what ways can we? get you more involved in our quizzes. We'd love to have you join us on our conferences on Wednesday, but uh, that's kind of difficult. I do a conference every Wednesday, 12 to 1. I quiz the faculty. It'd be great to have more people join us, but I'm not sure of a good way of doing that. Uh, it's just really challenging, but I'm trying to think about it. So we may be able to do that at some point, somewhere, somehow. And um, I do see a number of people with comments and uh, Indra Neal, a big fan of ours. Uh, so there's a lot of people we know, and I did meet a lot of people at RSNA, many of you who are probably on this call now, or we'll look at it later. I met at RSNA for the first time, and uh, we really appreciate everyone's kind words. We appreciate also the Ant Mini we got for the best app. Uh, and again, we're constantly doing, doing things. So we're looking at ways of expanding what we do, uh, we're looking at perhaps using ChatGTP with Microsoft as a way of enhancing how we can use all the material we have. So I think you're going to see a lot 
And I don't want to tell you everything that we're doing or thinking about doing in 2024, but I can promise you that we are going to be doing all sorts of cool things, but I think things that will help everyone learn. So with that, I'm looking in the uh, comments section. I see one question I can't answer, but uh, I see a lot of other comments. Um, and so hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, be able to get more things done. Anyway, let me stop there if no one has any specific questions and I uh, hope everybody has a great day. See you soon.